Okay, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to set up your audio hardware with Cubase. In this case, I'm going to be using Cubase LE4. Uh, this setup tutorial will work in any version of Cubase, uh, as long as it's version 4 or after. Uh, earlier versions had a little bit different thing going on. So Cubase LE4, Cubase LE5, you should have no problems following this tutorial. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, just for the sake of not having to look at the screen, I'm going to start a new project, leave it empty. Um, when it says set project folder, this is where your audio files get recorded to. If you're using this for the first time, um, you want to make a, you're going to want to make a project folder. Um, it's easier for keeping audio files together. Don't just stick everything in one parent file. It gets messy. So we're going to stick it there for the sake of this, and I did not mean to do that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, and this tutorial assumes that you've already installed your audio drivers and everything's working on the on your hardware end. Um, if not, this won't work. Uh, we want to go to Devices, Device Setup, and we want to click on VST Audio System. And under ASIO driver, we want to select what we're going to be using. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using Soundflower, so you can hear it. But uh, what Soundflower actually is, is my tone port. It'll be the same thing. It'll make sense, I promise. So you select your audio interface under this list. If it doesn't show up, you probably installed something wrong. So st start at the beginning reinstall things um, real just real quick uh, if you are having latency problems or you're having audio drops out dropouts clicks pops that kind of thing what you want to do is under VST audio system click on it uh, on the actual audio interface thingy and uh, under control panel hit control panel you'll have your ASIO settings show up and a buffer size now, the way it works is the larger the buffer size, the more latency, however, the less it taxes your computer. That is how much CPU you have to commit to doing processes in Cubase. Go down lower and the latency goes down dramatically, however, uh, you will be using a lot more CPU power. So that's the way that works. Um, in general, uh, if you have to monitor a synthesizer or uh, a virtual amplifier simulation, um, you would leave this low. If not, if you're just recording audio, um, leave it high and use your audio interfaces, um, zero latency type thingy to monitor it. It's usually either a mix knob or some sort of uh, utility um, program that you would use to monitor. Make sense? Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, you'll, you'll understand what that means. Alright, when you're all done, hit OK. And then go Devices, VST, Connections. Start with your inputs. What you want to do is remove anything that's there. Now in the case of what I'm using today, it just has two inputs available that I know of. So we're going to create two mono inputs and then we're gonna have a preset we'll call this sound flower and we hit OK the reason why we're gonna make a preset is because if this ever gets messed up you can go back to this window and just recall your preset and it will do everything you did if you have a bigger audio interface like a Profire 2626 for example you would have under this device port you'd have 26 options over here and you would want to create, like I only created two uh, mono inputs, you would want to create 26. Uh, so, a little different there. With the outputs, uh, most small interfaces just have two outputs, just a stereo out. So, you just go stereo out left, stereo out right, give it a preset, soundflower, hit OK. Again, that's so you can recall it. Um, if any of these work for your setup, you can use these. Um, when you're all done, hit X. The first test that you want to do to make sure you got things set up correctly is go ahead and grab some sort of audio file 
and import it. I did that really fast. Let me show you how that's done. That's file, import, audio file. Select the audio file from whatever directory you have it in and hit import and it will put it on an audio track. Now if you did it right, when you hit play, you should hear it. Success. We've got metering down here and all is good. Okay, so the next thing you need to do and this isn't going to this isn't going to work with the way I have it, but let me go ahead and just change it real quick. Okay. Next thing you need to do. Let me get my preset up here. Okay, the next thing you need to do is make sure that you can record. Now, a good indicator that you can record is seeing this little meter bounce up and down down here. That's good. If you see that, great. If not, well, it's not the end of the world, but uh, you might, you're just going to have to figure out what went wrong. <laughs> um, create a new audio track by going Project Add Track Audio like I just did here, or you can double click in this area and it'll bring up the same window. Give it a name. Okay, by double clicking here, give it a name. If you don't have this track inspector open, this little button up here opens it. You need to have it open. Now, audio tracks are very simple. You have your input, which we're going to go stereo in, and your output, stereo out. So, very simply, you just have it selected like this because I'm in the left stereo in on the tone port. And you arm the track, hit record. If you see audio blobs like you see here, then perfect. Okay, so we've recorded. Should be able to go back, hit play, and it'll play back. I'm not going to do that because I'm trying to save time here. Uh, if you have any, any questions, uh, feel free to comment, and I'll answer them as I can. Thanks.